2021 is coming to an end. There's something special about sitting down at this time of year and looking back at all of the things that you've achieved and done over the past 12 months. While I haven't been away with my camera as much as I'd like to have been this year, I've had some great experiences nevertheless. From misty morning shoots in Glen Affric and rural Perthshire, to my first trip to East Lothian, where I explored new coves and beaches and tick some more lighthouses off my photography bucket list. I also hosted two successful residential workshops in two of my favourite areas of Scotland and experimented with new photographic techniques such as ICM and different subjects such as abstract. In my last video, I encouraged you all to sit down and pick your top 10 images of 2021. As I encouraged you to do this, I thought it would be nice for me to sit down and share my images with you. So here is my top 10 images of 2021. If I had to pick one photo shoot from this year that completely blew me away, it's strangely one that I did at a, a local location that I've very rarely photographed because there's not much interest there in terms of foregrounds and interesting vantage points. And that is, is this place here, which is Forvey Sands National Nature Reserve. And here you basically have miles of sand dunes. And of course they can be beautiful to photograph. And it's a good location to go to at sunrise if you want to see the sun rising over the beach. But I went there one evening with a friend for sunset and I was totally blown away with the light and the magnitude of these sand dunes and how the light interacted with the sand dunes on this evening. I think this was the first time that I'd been to this location in the spring months when the breeding season for terns begins. And at that time of year, this nature reserve cordons off quite a large amount of their sand dunes so that the terns can breed undisturbed. And because of that, you had this beautiful untouched area of sand dunes. And as the light was setting to my right, it was casting these beautiful shadows and streams of light across the sand dunes themselves, allowing for some beautiful contrast contrast and saturation and geometric shapes to appear within the images. Most of the shots that I got that day I was really really happy with but this one in particular really speaks to me and I've named this shot yin and yang. You've got the dark shadowed sand dune at the bottom half of the image then you've got that slithering of light at that sand dune in the distance and the brighter sky behind it. And it, for me, this was teaching me about the importance of looking for balance, for looking for geometric shapes. And again, working and connecting with the light that's happening when you're there. And these are very different shots to what I've ever shot before. And because of that, it excites me. And it's a location that I, I hope to go back to again in spring and summer of, of 2022. Now, if you're into landscape photography, you'll know of the importance of light. And it can be quite rare to get light that really speaks to you, really dramatic, captivating light that streams through the clouds and illuminates the landscape before you. But this image here, I absolutely love it. And this was shot at Findhorn Beach, which is a location that I regularly go to and I've showcased on this channel many, many times and is where I do the majority of my photography workshops. And when you go to a location that you go to regularly, it can be quite hard at times to come away with unique images. But it's all about the weather and the mood and the atmosphere on that day and how you can capture it alongside the, the subjects that you shoot regularly to come away with something different. And this shot here to me speaks to me so much because the amount of times I've been to Fintorn to do photography is, you know, it, it's countless. And to get light like this, it does happen quite a lot, but I've very rarely been able to capture it. And this image here was actually taken at the, the end of May, start of June of, of this year. And we had in May time quite a lot of, of snow and hailstorms coming through, which was very unseasonable. But with that stormy kind of weather and that coldness, we had all this stunning light. And being able to capture it at a location like Fintorn, it just, it was one of these, these photo shoots that just, I'll, I'll never forget it because it was very, very exciting. And a very valuable lesson that I learned from this shoot, as you will have seen in the video, is 
getting on location early is so important. This image was taken about an hour and a half before sunset and most photographers head out for actual sunset. But if you go on location early, it's often when you're there early that you get the best light. And on this evening, the actual sunset didn't really happen. The clouds came in, the light completely disappeared and it was a very gray and boring sunset. But the light an hour and a half beforehand, as you can see here, was just beautiful. And I learned a lot from this shoot and it was something that I, I tried to showcase on this channel through the video. And because of that, I think this photo shoot um, meant a lot to me and it was a really exciting one to be able to undertake. So this image here is one that I haven't actually shared with anybody yet. This was taken in November when I was doing some work for Nikon. And this image and some of the other images I took during this shoot are going to be showcased in a video that Nikon have, have produced where, with myself that will be coming out in January uh, through all their um, social media channels. But the morning that we went to shoot this, it was just one of these amazing mornings. It was really crisp and cold, nice and clear air. And we began to have these lovely wispy clouds coming in over the famous Bofiddle Rock, which is one of the great locations that is on the Murray Coast that I enjoy photographing. And this one, probably the most famous one. It's very difficult to get unique images of Bofiddle Rock. And if anybody enjoys going round and the United Kingdom and photographing iconic locations and I'm pretty certain you will have heard of Bofiddle Rock. So when you go to somewhere that's quite iconic what you have to do is hope that the elements are going to do something a little bit different. So you're hoping for beautiful lights, you're hoping for atmosphere, you're hoping for interesting clouds and you're also possibly going to use filters to create different shutter speeds and motion within both the sea and the clouds if you're at the coastline of course. And that's what I did with this image here and I love I love the composition, I love the clouds that were coming in over the rock and I love her using a longer exposure to, to even out the sea a little bit and create that more milky effect. I think it just adds to the impact of this image and this photo shoot reminded me of how much I love doing seascape photography. And this is the sort of images I used to shoot on a weekly basis. Um, you know, years ago when I first got into photography, I'd be going out many evenings a week or many mornings to capture sunrises and sunsets at locations like this with filters and with similar conditions. And it's something that I've began to move away from quite a bit this year, as you'll see with the rest of this video and the images that I've chosen, but it just reminded me of my roots and how much I love these styles of subjects. So like I say, a bit of a bonus image here, no clips to go along with it, um, but it was a morning to remember and you'll see, as I say, more of these shots from this shoot um, on the Nikon um, social media channels in the new year, if, if you're interested. The next image is actually one from my last outdoor photography shoot that I did this year at one of my local beaches and that is, is this image here. And I think, although to me this image isn't one of the best shots I've ever taken, but I love it because I like the simplicity of it and I like the power that the sunrise lights and the reflected clouds has within the photograph and the balance that I've managed to create here with the wet sand reflecting that light on the image. And for me, this photo shoot taught me the importance of working with what you've got and the importance of not writing off a photo shoot. Because what happened to me that morning, as you will have seen in the video, is when I arrived on location, I was expecting these beautiful big pools of water that I could have got some lovely images of, of the sunrise reflecting onto them. But when I arrived, there wasn't any pools. It was just this vast expanse of wet sand. And it was very difficult to find interesting water, uh, pools of water for the reflection. It was very difficult to find foreground interest within the sand. It was just this vast expanse of sand. And the only things on the sand when I initially arrived that I could see to include in my images was fishing net that had been uh, washed up on the beach, which was all right to use as foreground interest, but I wanted something more natural. And then I came across these beautiful pieces of seaweed that were just sticking out of the sand. And I just thought it was quite an interesting subject. It's, I've never seen, I've never seen seaweed sticking out of the sand like this on a beach before. And being able to couple that with the wet sand at low tide and the beautiful sunrise, it just, I think, reminded me that when you get on location, just work with what you have. 
Don't give up, don't just pack up and go home. Just work with what you have. Walk around, explore, be patient, mindfully tune in to what's going on around you and you will find photographic opportunities. And uh, yeah, this image is just a, a good representation of that and with working with what you have to produce images in beautiful times of day. This year, one of the most exciting things I think I did was experiment a lot more with my photography. Now, ever since I began photography, I've been very much drawn to landscapes and seascapes, which I, of course, love photographing. And as you've seen already in this roundup of images, that most of the images are landscapes and seascapes, if not all of them, actually. Um, but I really wanted to embrace different forms of photography this year, get a little bit more creative, See if there's a way of coming up with different images, especially in less favourable conditions. And ICM is one of the things that I tried, especially the last sort of three or four months of this year. And it's something that I still need to learn. There's a lot um, for me to practice within this genre of photography. But I've been really blown away with many of the images I've captured through doing intentional camera movement. And it was difficult to pick which shot was my favourite out of all of them. But I've picked this image here because I love the abstract element to it and the fact that it was shot in the autumn months. Of course, autumn is one of the most exciting times of the year to do landscape photography. So coupling that orangey colour that I found in the ferns here with intentional camera movement, I came away with a number of images like this. But this one I feel was my best shot because you've got that motion, that blur. It's not 100% certain what this image is of, but once you know it's ferns, or work out that it's ferns, it's I think quite an interesting image and I just love the abstract nature to it and when I looked at all the shots side by side as small thumbnails on my computer desktop, uh, this one spoke to me the most. So ICM is something I will definitely be doing more of next year and I've been um, really impressed I think with some of the results I've got this year so I had to include one of those shots in this roundup. Sticking with the theme of trying different things, one thing that I really enjoyed doing this year was using my 24 to 200 millimeter lens to zoom into different elements within the landscape and create much more intimate shots and detailed shots of different elements of nature. And this image here, I just absolutely love. I think it's a very simple shot, but it incorporates two of my favorite elements uh, within nature. And that of course is water and trees. I love that you've got that slightly long exposure that's given you a little bit of blur in the water and you've got the beginnings of the autumn colours beginning to turn there on the leaves. And by cropping this into a square crop, it really allowed me to focus on the two elements here and how they are side by side within the landscape and being able to zoom right into 200 millimetres to capture this shot. I think it's a much more captivating shot than photographing the grand vista of the waterfall itself, especially because in this situation, as you will have seen if you watched the video at the time, most of the trees were still green. So it was about zooming into those tiny little pockets of colour that were beginning to appear and incorporating that with something interesting to go alongside it. And this style of photography, this more abstract, intimate, detailed shots of nature is something that I have loved dabbling in this year. And it's a style of photography that I'd encourage you all to do. If you're struggling with those grand vista shots and there's a lot of mess going on around you, especially if you're shooting somewhere like woodlands, by zooming into the subject and, and the landscape around you, you can get much more simple and captivating shots. There's always something worth thinking about and it's always worth having a telephoto lens in your bag to try this out. And uh, this is definitely a style of photography and a genre of photography that I will be doing a lot more of in 2022. At the start of 2021 here in Scotland, we found ourselves in our second lockdown. And the first lockdown was difficult, but the second lockdown being in the winter, in many ways, I found it, given that we'd already been through that whole situation of not being able to go anywhere and photograph very much and being limited to like our gardens and immediate area, I found it very challenging the first lockdown. But the second lockdown, I felt like I really wanted to make the most of it this time and to 
open my eyes up to more of what was going on. So if you remember back to 2020, the first lockdown, I did a lot of macro photography in my garden. I photographed bugs and insects and, and flowers. And I really, really enjoyed that. But I don't feel it really spoke to me really deeply as a creative person. But in the second lockdown, I began to photograph ice. We had a lot of really cold weather in January and February of this year. And I just got on my telephoto lens and I walked around the fields that were around my home at the time. And I looked down at these frozen puzzles and I just photographed all these different cracks and shapes and patterns within the ice. And I came away with a number of images that I really, really liked. And it just reminded me of how important it is when you're out and about to look everywhere that's around you. There's so many photographers, myself included, who walk past photographic opportunities all the time. There's literally photographic opportunities everywhere if you take the time and the vision to open up to them. And this kind of proved that to me. You know, you could walk around these fields looking for vistas and looking for things to include in the foreground and we're waiting for that gorgeous light and not getting anywhere. But by walking around these fields and these pathways in the countryside and looking on the ground and seeing these frozen puddles and then just trying to find shapes and patterns within them to create captivating photographs, I found it to be a really mindful and beautiful experience. And it's definitely something that I'll be doing again this January and February and however long winter goes on for this year when the ice and the frost does hit because it's just mind blowing what you can create. And this image here is the one I decided to choose because you can see you've got all these bubbles of, of ice and, and water uh, within this pool of water here, but you also have these tiny cracks within the middle of them and these tiny bubbles, things which pretty much nobody looks at, but they're there waiting for us to discover. And this photograph and these photo shoots just blew my mind and I just had to include one of these images in these, this top 10 roundup because it's just amazing what you can find when you start to look. Misty conditions is something that I think every photographer dreams of and we all visualise these especially in the autumn months when we're wanting that autumnal mist with a sunrise in a woodland or in the spring months as well you can get a lot of mist as the mornings are still quite cold but the day temperature begins to rise but this image here was actually taken in the summertime when the weather was, was pretty hot and I didn't expect to be able to capture mist and foggy conditions in the summer. But of course, depending on what the weather's doing, you can get mist and fog all year round. But this photograph speaks to me so much. In my opinion, it's one of the best images I've ever taken. And it was so unexpected. I hadn't planned to get up this morning. What happened was I had woken up at 4 a.m. and I was staying in this pod in the middle of rural Perthshire. And out the front of the pod we had this beautiful view of trees and mountains. And when I woke up, we didn't have the curtains shut and we looked out and it was like, oh my gosh, it is really misty. And I just grabbed my stuff and I went out and did a very spontaneous video and photo shoot. And I ended up coming away with this shot here, which as I say, I personally think is one of the best images I've ever captured. I love the tree line and how you've got that darker and lighter band of trees there and how the mist added with the, the blue hour light that we had here before the sun rose. I just thought it was one of these moments that you'll never forget. It was so unplanned, unpredictable and exquisitely beautiful. And by zooming in to 200 millimetres and just focusing in on this small bit of tree line and how the mist was interacting with it, I just, I love this image so much. And um, to me, like I say, it's just, um, it's an unforgettable shoot. And it just showcases the importance, I think, sometimes of being a bit spontaneous with your photography and reacting to the weather. And when you react to the weather and what's going on around you, you often come away with your best photographs. So yeah, I just uh, absolutely love this image. Now, of course, lighthouses are one of my favourite things to photograph and Rattray Head Lighthouse here is one of the most photographed lighthouses that I've personally shot. I go to Rattray Head probably at least five times a year. I absolutely love this location, but it's a very difficult location to get unique photographs from because a lot of photographers go there and they tend to go there for sunrise because the sun tends to rise behind or beside the lighthouse itself. 
but I wanted to mix things up a little bit and I went there at sunset and actually the photographs that I got that evening and, and a few weeks later when I went back there for sunset again are some of the best shots I've ever got of this lighthouse and I picked this image here out of all the ones I took of Rattray Head this year because I love the blue tones and I love how using a three stop filter has allowed me to slow down the water enough to get this crashing wave in motion as it comes towards the shore. And by cropping it as an almost panoramic style image, I feel it really adds to the impact here. It eliminates the sand in the foreground and the vast sky where there wasn't much going on and really emphasises the lighthouse and the wave coming into shore. And to me, it was like everything just came together here. The light was beautiful, the waves were beautiful. And as I say, trying to get creative using a filter. I just like this shot because it's different. Yes, you, you're not face on to the lighthouse and the lighthouse, you know, you're not getting the, the windows and everything to give you that interest, but it's something different and it's about showcasing the elements around the subject and how they form the landscape that surrounds it. And for that reason, I really, really like this shot. Now, I said earlier in this video that the misty trees shot is one of the best photographs I personally feel I've ever taken. But this year I am convinced that I've taken the best photograph that I definitely have ever taken. And that of course is this image here. I was totally blown away when I took this shot. Everything just came together. Again, it was a very unplanned shoot. It was a case of let's go to this lighthouse and scout out with the intention of going back later in the week to do a proper photo shoot. But literally within half an hour of arriving, just walking around this location, the weather changed, we had this incoming rain shower, and with that incoming rain shower came some beautiful light, and that coupled with the rain brought on this beautiful rainbow, and there was this pool of water almost strategically placed in front of the lighthouse to allow reflections, and you had this 50-50 view here of this beautiful blue sky and rainbow on the left, and these foreboding stormy clouds on the right, and this lighthouse and reflection in the pool of water bang in the middle of the frame. And I just think this photograph includes everything I think every landscape photographer dreams of. A nice location, a nice subject, beautiful light, mood and atmosphere, and a nice composition to go along with it. And like I say, to me, this is my personal favourite and best photograph I've ever taken and it was taken this year despite me not getting away as much as I would have liked to and um, yeah I will never ever forget this shoot like it just it's going to always have a very very special place in my heart and it was somewhere I'd never been before which made it even more exciting and it's a lighthouse which of course is my favourite subject to shoot so yeah, I, I love this shot and I'll definitely be getting it printed and framed um, in my house um, at some point soon because, um, yeah, I just think it's, it's, it's amazing. Uh, the, the, the atmosphere that day was, was amazing. So there we have it. That was my favourite images, my top 10 photographs of 2021. Overall, this year for me, I think has been the year when I've leaped forward the most in my photography. I've experimented with new things. I've opened my eyes up to different genres and I've captured some of the favourite photographs I think I've ever taken. And I personally have learned a lot this year in terms of subjects and moods and light and it's been a very eye-opening year and I hope you've enjoyed watching my adventures this year and this progression for me and my creative side of photography. And I am certain that next year things are going to progress even further and of course I'll be sharing all of the, the adventures and that journey with you on, on YouTube. So stay tuned for that and I hope you enjoy it. I've got a trip planned at the end of January providing we're able to travel uh, to the west coast. I'm not going to say exactly where but it's quite a famous location. I'm gonna, I've got a work trip planned to a part of Scotland I've never been to before in February, which I'm gonna couple with a few extra days holiday. So that'll be exciting and I should get some more lighthouses ticked off as well, providing it can go ahead. So stay tuned for that if you're interested. And then throughout the rest of the year, I just hope to, to go to the Highlands a little bit more and do some more stuff within my local area as well to keep broadening my horizons as a photographer and the different photographic subject matter that, that is available to, to me and that's available in this country because 
and you know Scotland is beautiful and I cannot wait to share more of it with you in 2022. If you haven't done so already and you have Instagram, remember you can share your top 10 images that you personally feel you've taken this year using the hashtag mytop 10 for kg As always, I want to say a huge thank you for watching. I hope you are happy with your photographs this year and I wish you all the best for the new year. And I look forward to hopefully seeing you all again next time.